Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to our subscriber game tournament season 2 as we continue with round 1 with a matchup in group 4 between Beihai Butchers versus Barbaric Trivia. No relations. And looking at their draft before we kick things off, on the green side we have Beihai Butchers using quite interesting generals here. We have Zhang Jiao or Zhang Jue combined with Meng Huo plus Zhu Rong. So of course, because of the husband and wife combo between Meng Huo and Zhu Rong, they will activate the passive called Power of Love, which will give each of them 25% damage resistance. It's quite nice. Now both of them have very limited health, so it's balanced in a sense. Zhang Jiao is a suicidal general, because when he dies, all units within 100 meter of him, I believe, will get invincibility for the next 60 seconds, and that is huge. Uh, on top of these three interesting general choices are some new units, as we haven't seen many Yellow Turban and Nunman generals in the tournament so far. And starting things off, we have the Messengers of Heaven, which is a double unit size cavalry for Zhang Jiao. And their strength really comes from the fact that they have double the regular cavalry unit size, so their decent damage is actually doubled, making them one of the hardest hitting cavalry in sort of a cavalry versus cavalry combat. So even though you don't have a lot of armor piercing damage, you don't have a lot of the charge bonus value that you would see on a shot cavalry, just because you have twice the number, you're going to do a lot better in most instances. And they're not that expensive for custom battles, so bringing four of them here is quite nice. Then for Meng Huo, we have five unit of the wolf pack. These units have adjacency bonus, as in if they are another wolf pack unit near them, they'll gain tremendous bonuses to their speed, to their charge bonus, and I don't know if it's damage, it's three things I know. It all has to do with speed and charging and often, so it's a very aggressive setup. We'll take a look at the bonus once we do hop into the actual battle. And then finally, speaking of aggression, we have four elephants, three of them being uh, the war elephant variety. So more damage focus, more health, more charge. And then one for support, which is the Nanjong Elephant. It plays one of three songs and it can provide a set bonus depending on which song it's playing. There's two really good ones uh, that boost combat capability, whether it's adding damage, giving speed, fatigue immunity, and I believe one is more of a defensive bonus. Uh, that's why we see actually three Nanjo Elephants on Barbaric Trivia side, which we'll talk about right now. He brought Zheng Jiang, Sha Mo Ke, and Dong Chuo. So, three Nanjo Elephants, pretty big investment in Elephant right there. Elephants are not cheap, and it's a decent choice, although I'm not sure if all three are needed here. Uh, Nanjo Elephants have three different songs. You can have them play different songs because the same song does not stack. So technically, you could activate all three bonuses for your entire army. But at the same time, they are the most expensive type of elephant. And one of the bonuses is not that useful, especially once combat starts. Getting a little bit of movement speed and fatigue immunity is not going to be that good. Uh, but with micro, you know, elephants can do great against enemy infantry. Speaking of infantry, Zheng Jiang is bringing the infantry for Barbaric Trivia. We have four units of the Zor Dragon. When you go with a bandit option, such as Zheng Jiang, you're very limited in what troop you can bring. Most of the faction you need, bandit troops are a bit weak. Uh, so a Zor Dragon is definitely a good choice. Hybrid unit as well, has a bow, probably could fire arrow and poison arrow. So there are some options there with those effects as well. And then finally, we have two cheap shot cavalry for Dong Zhuo. Uh, which is where the money has to be saved. Dong Zhuo is also an interesting general in that he has a lot of armor and will go over 100% armor once he dip below 50% health. Usually that is a pretty strong thing in the campaign, but for multiplayer, there's a couple weakness to that. First, when you're below 50% health, vanguards typically will start routing due to damage taken and their innate low morale. And second, most generals are going to have a lot of armor piercing damage, at least the premium ones that you usually see in multiplayer as well as units. So having 180% armor, which is as high as you can get it to, 
is rather meaningless. Uh, regardless, we have a Vanguard with some nice clear abilities, and we'll see how this match plays out on the battlefield. And as we hop in here, we can see that Beihai Butchers um, taking a pretty aggressive position, if you think about it. They start over here with a deployment, but they deployed quite far ahead with the Wolfpack. He's trying to get a charge from the beginning at the enemy who is not there because we have some aggressive deployment in response. We have the bandit unit hiding over here in this little forest area. We have Dong Zhuo flanking with his cavalry. Uh, the elephants front and center here for Beihai Butchers with the cavalry flanking on both sides. Generals are together. Uh, I like keeping generals together. Unless maybe for Zhang Diao, you want to sacrifice him to activate his ability, which is Lord of Heaven. If he dies 100 meter, all units get invincible, which means they take no damage for 60 seconds and they can still fight back. Very powerful, but you have to time it right for when he dies and where he dies and where all your other units are. Meng Huo and Lady Zhu Rong has the power of love, uh, which is active right now as long as they're alive. Uh, 5,000 meters, pretty much the whole map, and it's going to be here forever. They both get immune to fatigue. They don't have good active abilities. They have, you know, Crippling Blow, which is sort of a half measure Wisdom of River ability. Uh, pretty long cooldown for most Nama ability. We have a Defiant Roar, which is a weaker version of Roar of the Beast, but much longer cooldown once again. And then Lady Jerome has an interesting Flying Dagger ability. It's hard to hit because it's a single target range ability that the enemy will have a pretty easy time dodging if they're paying attention. But assuming you do hit this, it's decent damage, 10k. And then Rending Strike. It's sort of a splash damage ability. The problem here is the long cooldown, which is 120 seconds or 121 seconds for pretty much all the Nama abilities. Then looking at Barbaric Trivia, he has his elephant with King Shamuoko, who is also on an elephant, which I'm not so sure is a great decision. Uh, as you can see, he defaults to a silver elephant. It makes him more expensive as a general to recruit. You give up the really good mace weapon that he has as you're now using the elephant's damage rather than the mace damage. So I think that's actually a downgrade for King Shamuoko. He is unbreakable, so that part is nice. And I believe he can fire his bow on top of his elephant. Actually, I'm not sure. I actually think you also lose the ability to use the bow. Uh, the elephants are very tightly packed, uh, and I don't... I mean, I don't understand the rationale behind bringing the three elephants who can play three different songs to boost nearby unit, and then you end up not putting any of your unit near the elephants. So who are they actually boosting here? Because those three elephants will give each other 15% speed, 15% damage, and 15% you know, percent evasion and morale, but the elephants themselves don't need those stats, right? They're here to trump, like, just basically step on units they actually could use that stat. Azor Dragons have both range and melee capabilities, so the 15% damage for both melee and range would apply to them sort of equally, and they can benefit quite a bit from gaining a bit of melee evasion, which is sort of their weak defensive stat compared to their armor. And uh, now they're too far away, and I don't think they can walk over there during this battle, so it feels like Bring the three boosting elephant, but not putting the troops near the elephant to boost seems to be a, a problem here. But let's see how things play out. As both sides take stock of the situation and the deployment, uh, I mean, the information is not uh, equivalent because for Beihai Butchers, you start the match, you only see perhaps King Shamuoko with his elephants. Or maybe they're hiding under this tree, although I don't think you can hide elephants, I think they're visible. Uh, and then you don't see the two other generals, you only knew uh, like Zheng Jiang's leading the army, so this is the only info that you kind of know. So perhaps you're expecting maybe even Yan Bai Hu. But they're just going for it. The elephant's playing the speed up bonus and the fatigue immunity for this movement phase. He has all three songs, or two of them. Two of them active? Oh, there we go, all three. And he's trying to relocate the elephant to where his troops. We probably see some shots. But the melee cap's gonna shrug that off. They're cutting off the elephants from joining with the troops. 
Yeah, this type of guerrilla deployment is kind of meaningless. Like, what's the initial thought behind this? If you're just going to relocate your elephants to them. This big flank. Are the elephants going to try to chase down cavalry? That's not going to actually work. But I like the effort to, you know, move them back towards your unit. As both sides sort of just swap over. I would assume the Beihai Butchers are still looking for the other two generals. We don't have intel on them, so maybe he's still trying to scout for potentially Yan Bai Hu being on the field, no longer hiding them. They were safe, they were hidden, so Yan Bai Hu couldn't really shoot them if you can't see them. And as always, whenever you split your units like this, you know, it all sort of divides your attention in terms of where you have to micro. And right now you can see they have just not budged. Maybe they're trying to stay hidden, but what's the purpose behind staying hidden at this point? There we go, they're moving now. They see their generals in trouble, but really should send the cav, should send the third general as well. So they got some movement out of the enemy and they halted their attack. Just to take a look at what's going on. Zhongzhuo still has not moved. He's pretty happy hiding in the forest. I don't think they have fire, I think they have poison. Yep. Poison arrows are going to be good against the infantry. When the cavalry get hit, the damage is, I mean, they're better than the regular cavalry just because, you know, there's 60 of them. So it's per model that will take the 15 damage. They won't take much of the range damage, but they'll take plenty of the poison damage. The only good news we have is the fact that, ooh, ooh, did she, she missed. The poison dagger attempt didn't hit. We saw it, you know, light across. It's hard to hit those single, you know, target range abilities. The cavalry fighting the elephants probably the best thing. But they're not going to get knocked down like infantry. So you can actually swarm the elephant and you have good numbers here. Lady Jurong's fighting the elephant. The debuff of the morale, the burn damage. Having your generals on elephant, I think it's a really bad idea. John Zhao should be braver. He's very happy to die here. But I guess you want to fight with all your units, perhaps a little combined force situation, which is why Dongzhuo is also rushing over. Look at those messenger of heaven. There's so many of them. And uh, so many of them on the ground as well. As probably everyone has seen before in a famous movie about elephants fighting cavalry. It doesn't usually go well for the cavalry. Although they killed a good number of the elephants as well. So it's not that bad. Alright, now we have both sides meeting each other. So these are the war elephants. You can see the charge bonus, 460, it's massive. The damage is all right. Uh, they have a range component in the little basket above. It's not, you know, it's, it's not no damage. Uh, it's a little bit of damage, uh, but it's not really going to do too much. It's mainly about the elephant. Is she trying to throw the dagger? This looks like a very obvious dagger throw. She just like ran into range and then missed, right? <laughs> it's just so easy to dodge that. And you can compare them with a Nunjo elephant, which costs more, but has less than half of the charge bonus. And I believe they have less health as well, although these are damaged, so it's kind of hard to gauge. But 35k versus these at full health, 72. There's no way this little bit of missing health, it's more than half. So clearly, uh, the health is very different. Oh, they have a healthy one. Right, it's 48. 48 versus 72. It's a big health difference. The general just went for it. I think the High Butchers probably feel pretty confident if the only unit assisting the fight are the two Mounted Lancers, because no one else can really interfere or catch up to the Generals when they want to pull away. 
but they're still taking chunks off of Meng Huo and Lady Zhurong, who only have 25k health. That's... Ooh! That's a hit. That's 10k gone over the next, you know, however many seconds, 15 seconds. So, one out of three. She landed one. I mean, Kuro has one too. She could try to throw those. A direct charge on the elephant. Are the infantry making a move? Yes. Okay, so it's just a straight up charge to engage. I think it's because the poison volley was turned off for a moment since they didn't want to shoot down the general. So they turned off fire will. Now they're turning it back on. Now the poison will do great against these multiple entity infantry who should not be stop charging. Keep charging. What are you doing? Uh, that's a little weird. There we go, now they're moving. But honestly, I think the Zoro Dragons might do better if they just go into melee and help the elephants kill off the enemy cavalry real quick because they are poor arm units rather than letting the elephants get killed here. Because the elephants will do so much better against the wolf pack that they should just swap the targeting here. Alright, Lady Zoro is trying to do damage here. Zhongzhuo going to smash elephants. It's hard to bring down... Uh, well, the Nundrum elephants play the easiest target, but it's hard to bring down the war elephants. They have just so much health. They're not giving any commands. They're not fighting back. There we go, finally. So v1. 3v1 now. I mean, the good news is everyone's unbreakable, all three generals, for very high butchers. Not the case for barbaric trivia here. Only the elephant mounted Shamoko is unbreakable here. Dong Zhuo, I believe, dismounted when he charged the wolf pack. Lady Zhuo not given any command, not throwing any of her daggers either. The cavalry re-enters the combat. Now, Wolfpack are probably not going to be able to beat those war dragons in melee, but the el oh, here comes the elephants. But the elephants will. Uh, good, good amount of armor. Most Nunmai units don't have armor piercing damage. They'll struggle here. But with so many war elephants coming in, tossing units around, yep, that's what's going to happen. Elephants are great at killing infantry. And also very good at trapping generals. Generals have a hard time navigating out of a pack of elephants. She's not doing anything. I, I don't know what the rationale here is. I know she's low health, but just because you're low health doesn't mean you shouldn't do something. There we go. She's told to run somewhere else. Maybe chase? This is just a really random command as well. Yeah, this, this is a no-win situation. It's like, you can't really ignore Zhang out here. But you also don't really want to kill him, especially since if he's so close to all his allies, because everyone become invincible at that point. I believe he dismounted. Not by choice, but when he bumped into the Zor Dragons. But it's actually helping him, because he's chasing Don't Draw around, knocked him out. Lady Jerome's chasing after the elephant, all the other elephants coming in. And down goes the elephant. That's the only unbreakable unit. And everyone else shattered. I think, I mean, a few things. The choice of putting generals on elephant, I still think is a terrible one. It takes away one of your fighters, especially if you're bringing your own elephant. So you already have a solution for enemy infantry. Your generals don't need to do that. And especially if you brought Dong Zhuo, who has probably the best anti-infantry ability in Flame of the Phoenix. So it's really redundant, and you are not doing yourself any favors against the enemy general. Uh, the Poison Dagger actually hit pretty nicely. You got one out of three hits. I know it's not you know optimal, but getting any value from that ability is a plus, especially on low health targets. So it's a Zhuro and Meng Huo who only have 25k. So that went well. But I think the Elephant choice is also a big issue. Nanjong Elephants are very expensive. I know there are three different songs, but that does not mean you need three elephants. One is great. You switch the songs to your need and keep your units near your elephants so they can actually benefit from the song that you choose. 
And in this case, the elephant never actively charged into the enemy infantry. They sort of stayed there and got charged by the enemy cavalry, who probably did the right thing. I think with the messenger heaven in this matchup, their best job would be just to crowd the enemy elephant who can't knock them down. You can't knock down cavalry, you can only knock down infantry. So they're able to keep them pinned there. And the Zoro Dragon, although they're a hybrid unit, you have to treat them in that situation as your only pull-arm unit, right? Their job is to help you kill the enemy cavalry, and they just stood there and shot at the enemy infantry while the elephant were getting slaughtered. They should have just jumped in and helped clear out the messenger of heaven during that fight to free up the elephants to kill the wolf pack as they charged up. Like, poison arrow is okay. You do damage over time. One volley poisons them for a good, I think, 5-10 seconds. And then the next volley, uh, you want to you don't want to shoot continuous poison volley. It does very low base damage, and you're hoping the poison do the thing, but you're only refreshing the poison time. So essentially, you're not doing your damage. Uh, you want to shoot once, switch to regular arrows. You want to keep shooting, and then when it's about to wear off, you switch back to one volley of poison, and then you keep it back to the regular arrows. That way, you actually have high damage. But in the end, uh, even though they were quality infantry, once the war elephants piled in, it was kind of over. Um, so that was the big difference, the choice of elephants. Uh, although both sides used elephants, uh, one side did it much better. So congratulations to Beihai Butchers. And let's see the damage charts. Alrighty, so we can see that even though the Messenger Heaven didn't get many kills, that's understandable because they were just charging the elephants, which only have, you know, 12 each, I believe. And you can see, oh, they're actually, the health number is different from how many elephants there are. Uh, they keep track of something slightly different. Uh, let's just ignore this number. Uh, most of the elephants did die. N they didn't route off. This health number doesn't really matter. Uh, but in essence, they got a decent amount of kills, but these kills are pretty much all uh, cavalry kills. They fought against the wolf pack, and I think they fought okay against the wolf pack. They just got trampled by the elephants. When these two war elephants came in, look at the damage. Uh, pretty much wiped out some of these. Uh, I mean, this one just got wiped. Only got three kills and just completely wrecked. Um, and the elephant just walked over them. The cavalry, I think, tried to help with the general fighting, um, but you are basically down, man. And I don't think Dong Zhuo joined that early phase of the fight. So it was just Zheng Jiang fighting the three. Uh, although not all three were as active, I think Zhang Jiao stayed pretty passive early on, could probably have been more active. And once they were about, I would say, three tenth, like 30% health, I think she was down about 7.6k health, they stopped attacking for a bit. I guess maybe Behai Butcher was a bit worried about them dying and losing uh, the power of love bonus on each other. That's a valid concern, especially since you have the units to keep fighting, uh, but they probably would have been better served maybe dismounting and fighting the general at that time. Nothing was really going to pin them down because the cavalry were already gone, the elephant was already gone, uh, and they were about to be overran with the elephants. So maybe if they dismounted with Zhurong's weapon, probably could have close out some of these fights a little bit faster. Uh, but regardless, congratulations to Beihai Butchers for moving on uh, with a sub 10 minute win. So we'll see in the next matchup to see if it's any faster and we'll see who has side selection for round two. So until then, bye.